Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is your life coach, leadership coach, and motivational speaker. So today, as usual, actually, that's not usual. Usual it is Freestyle Thursday, but sometimes it's not on a Thursday because that's just about the freestyle things. But today is Christmas Eve, and um, things are certainly different than they have been the last year. I mean, this time last year, I was in Fairbanks, Alaska, and joined Northern Lights. It was like negative 15 degrees outside Fahrenheit, negative 15 degrees, and negative 25. I think the coldest day was there was negative 35 degrees. That is bone chilling cold. Um, but this time it's it's different. I mean, a lot of us are at home. We're not traveling. Um, if we are, maybe we're in small groups from household to household. I'm in Washington for sure. Those that don't know it already. And I'm looking outside my window and you know what? We might have a white Christmas because we're covered in snow. And it's been so cold here lately down. Cold meaning that's between 27 and 32 degrees that the snow just freezes as ice. Um, so look at my window. I'm seeing all the snow. I'm just how lovely the fresh air it is. Sun just came up. Sun rises at eight o'clock around here. So it's, it's pretty late and goes down about 415. But I, I really have to consider this. Um, I'm really in humbled and thankful for everybody. And this year and God and the faith I have, um, you know, Gloria and I just completed our virtual summit yesterday, which was, you know, she came up with a great, I never thought about a summit. So she came up with a great idea about having a virtual summit. So having our minds collaborate together, creating this summit and, and learning what we're doing and the people that are joining and the information we're getting is abundant and it can go to us for a lifetime. You know, I, I so happily when the protests were happening and people were, were breaking into Best Buy, Walmart and Target, whatever it was they were doing. I said to myself, damn, you know, if people actually robbed a Harvard University or robbed a Barnes and Nobles or robbed a Borders bookstore. I'm quite sure they're not robbed again because they're figuring out that, dang, you know, I got a lot of knowledge here. I don't need to rob anymore because I'm going to take care of myself. So I'm thankful for the fact that um, I'm on the right path. Um, Gloria and I are doing some big things this year. Um, we're going to start our own website, www.lifesashuffle.com. Not lunch yet, so don't type it in looking for it. It doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> but one thing came to mind that happened just two days ago. Um, you know, we all go through some different things in life, and we usually turn to our family members and trying to navigate our life and navigate what we want to do. So to make it short is, I don't always, why do we always say make it short? Just tell the damn story. So I'm going to just tell you the story. Okay? Your short stories end up being yeah. long. <laughs> just I, I, I don't have no idea why that, that mindset is, oh, I'm going to tell you a short story. Or, you know, have you heard, let me be honest with you. So you uh-huh. always lie all the time. Let me tell you the truth. This, this, <laughs> so you always tell, don't tell the truth. So the story goes like this. So my niece was supposed to go to my mom uh, this past Sunday, a couple of days ago, and uh Stay there because my sister's looking for a new job, you know. And, you know, we go into transition, you're a single parent, you can't really rely on anybody but yourself. And sometimes the other parent is not present. That's just kind of what happens in some situations. So 
So let's go to my mom. And obviously, COVID's going up. You know, my sister lives in Chicago. My mom lives in Arizona. So my niece about to travel from Chicago to Arizona. That's all I know. All I know is this is the plans were canceled last minute. Whatever last minute is, I don't know. I was a part of the conversation. I'm hearing everything third and fourth party. Okay. So my niece was to go to my mom. And my sister's very frustrated because my, my sister needed that wiggle room to navigate some things she's trying to get done, right? She wanted to make sure her child has stability. It's okay. She's in my mom's house. She can still continue with school. She'll be there for a couple of weeks. She can still do a program. Because we're trying to move and move not just around the state, but out of state. You're trying to find a job anywhere, right? I mean, my sister actually may find a job in Bethel, Alaska. I've never been there, but that's pretty far up. I mean, from Chicago. So, Plans got canceled. My sister was very upset. And I talked to my sister on uh, Sunday when it all happened. I texted her, hey, look, I heard what happened. And, you know, she, called, she actually called me and she gets venting to me. And, and I can, you know, a lot of times we have a shared belief system. And we might have a shared belief system is that she was saying some things that I resonate with. So subconsciously, I was taking my sister's side. And the reason I'm going to say that is that a couple of days later, my mom calls me up because I heard a story from my mom. Then I text my sister. Then my mom called a couple of days later. And then obviously, I want to get to the, the, the point. Of, hey, look, you know, uh, my sister, our my sister, I said, uh, she's kind of upset about what happened. And I was just my mom's side of the story. And I try to explain my sister's side of the story. And then my mom says, well, what about me? And for, she obviously got frustrated, hung, hung up the phone. Not in my face, but hung it up. And I said, damn, I think about this. We, I had a shared belief system. I'm not saying my sister was right or wrong. I'm saying I my belief was shared with her because I believe what she's going through and it resonated with me. So I didn't think about my mom. I, I just I magically mean, resonate with that, what my sister was saying. So today, after a podcast, I'm on my way to DMV because I gotta get a DMV, I gotta get a new driver's license from Washington. I'm gonna call my mom and say, look, you know what? I did something that I don't like to do. I don't like to take sides in the story because when I take sides that I'm believing one and not the other, and I wasn't there. I wasn't there what happened. I wasn't there what was said. I'm just here everything, third and fourth party. I mean, my fourth party means that when you go through a situation, you explain it one way, the way you interpret it, but maybe another situ- way it was interpreted another way. So you kind of have a story, but you summarize the story. Like right now, I'm summarizing a story. That's why I said short story about what was said. But I'm going to call and apologize because, damn, I should never have done that. I should never, ever take sides because I read the high with something else. Can can I kind of feel the pain because I went through the same frustrations my sister going through? Yes. But remember, the pain is different. It's a different time. I wasn't there. It's for different people. I'm in the middle. I don't want to be in the middle. So I'm calling mom and apologize that I did not see her point of view or at least listen to it. I automatically took one side. Even though I didn't say it, I did it. So regardless of what I said, my language didn't say specifically I'm taking my sister's side. Specifically, just where I was talking was I resonate with a side more than another. So you guys, excuse me, are out there. I had the burp, sorry. I out there and um, you know, hearing stories, you know, check your ego. And I obviously I'll that's a different story, but check what what you're resonating with. What are you believing without hearing the other person's side of the story? Because then we have a shared belief system. Just like religion, just like school, just like jobs, we get the shared belief systems and that's really what happens. And so I'm going to apologize because that's not something I want to do with my life. Now, if it was 10 to 15 years ago when I didn't have this awareness and didn't have these breakthroughs, of course, I would take one side. I'm going to take one side because I'm going to. And that's how we do it as human beings. We always want to take one side that resonates higher with us, that we feel it more, right? That's that emotional energy, but that's not what I want to do going forward. So that's my quick story. What about yourself, Gloria? Right. So you only heard one side of the story. You resonated with the story or your sister's story. So you you, you kind of got heated for a minute because you kind of brought back memories when you were younger, but you didn't hear your mom's side. And, you know, they say there's always two sides to the story. And you don't know where your mom's coming from also. And I, I heard the story to- from... Oh, go ahead. Well, first I heard the story from my mom. Then I heard from my sister. Then I heard from my mom again. And by the time, that third third time, yeah. by the time I heard the first time, I was already taken aside. Yeah. Because- So you were already, your mind was already I, set. It was already That's set. It was, right. Then I heard from my sister, then it was definite. Yeah. And then when I talked to my mom again, then I told my point of view. 
And that's where that's where uh, I feel I was wrong, and I it didn't shouldn't done something I should have done. You know, sometimes what if your mom wasn't really, what if she can't really explain herself very well? You know, whatever it was and whatever she was feeling or whatever her reasons was, it's definitely coming from somewhere. Um, and, you know, you can de- and uh, I, I can feel, I feel for your sister as well. I, you know, I can understand and totally understand the frustration because I would be frustrated too. But at the same time, you know, your mom is her own person as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and with that, there obviously is some fears too, right? And being mm-hmm. my mom doesn't want to get sick. Um, she's worried about my niece getting sick. It's understandable, you know, especially with a lot of older people right now. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. But I what I looked at it is that regardless of what's happening, we all we got is family members. All we got is family. Right. Right. And when when I mean my family, it's really what it comes down to is just myself, my sister, my mom. My dad passed away. Sometimes you're not that close to relatives like cousins, aunties, uncles, you know, something it just ain't that close, right? So you got the immediate family to depend upon. And when you're in a situation like you're in a rock and a hard place, you, you need you need one way out. And the way out was my sister needs to go there to help let my sister make some moves. And when that falls through, you have to readjust. Right. And um that's where I was like, damn, you know, you should have came through. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I, you should have came through. COVID or not, you should have came through. Because at that point, you know, but there's a lot more. The reality is in the situation, it's not what happened. All right. It's not the fact my niece didn't go there. My mom said no, whatever. What really would happen is there is pain there mm-hmm. and wounds that are there. See, the idea is, let me go a little deeper, is when I was growing up as a kid, so was my sister. My mom was not there as we expected her to be. Mm-hmm. She always chose men or things she wouldn't do in life over us. So it really has. So now what happens that little kid, mm-hmm. even though you're an adult, but that little kid scenario is still in your mind, like, damn, you not, weren't there for me. That really is the emotional side of the matter. So old wounds got festered a little bit, and they came up, and that was you weren't there for me. So yeah. you, here it is again. You're not there for me again. So when we be there for me, or I can't rely on you. That's that's the deeper level. That's pretty that's much it. Yeah. So it, it, like I said, it just kind of brought back some old memories for you, and that that came up. Um. Yeah, that's what it is. And well, I hope you resolve that, <laughs> and um, I'm sure it'll mean a lot to her if you if you apologize. You know, they're only here for a certain amount of time. And yeah. Let's make it better. You know what? It's not, that's why I want to live my life. So part of this is not only just healing the situation, but healing myself. Mm -hmm. And I think if you do, like, if you go back to her and apologize and just kind of, you know, apologize for whatever you said and however you felt that moment and just explain it to her why you were that way, that is healing for you. Mm -hmm. That will make you feel so much better and, you know, she'll understand it. And you just tell her, just tell her the truth. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to speak my mind. Just, I apologize. I didn't look at both sides of the coin. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's not who I'm going to be. Uh, I'm quite sure you have some some hesitation and you have your reasons. And, and my sister has your, her reasons, but she never takes sides. Yeah. That's it. Well, I'm over here still sipping on my coffee. <laughs> my so coffee is cold. I, <laughs> mine you know, mine is already cold too, but I'm still sipping it. It's so good. You know what we yeah. need to do is we got to go to this website called www.ember. So e m b e r dot com. So if you have a Yeti cup or a coffee mug, you have home those porcelain ones. Mm-hmm. So what this company does, it, they through technology and how they've done it, it keeps it warm. So you download this app on your phone. Be it you buy a, a full on mug or you buy one of those small. A, 10 to 12 ounce coffee cups, but you can put temperature on your phone and your coffee cup will stay warm. Interesting. So how over time, yeah, so like I'm sick and tired of you buy the Yeti cup, you're like, cool, it only stays warm for maybe an hour or two and then it starts getting cold. And then cold coffee sucks. This stuff keeps it warm, but it's like for a mug, it's like a buck, so 179 and for a coffee cup or a rare size, you know, 10, 12 ounces, like a $100. But if you tie the cold coffee, that's the way to go. So we should invest in one of those. Um, hmm. 
that I being know, said. I, I keep sipping it even if it's cold because it's just so good. I found this, um, you know, I don't do dairy, right? So <clears throat> I found a non-dairy creamer that's um, pumpkin spice. I thought I'd put some spice in it. <laughs> <laughs> like the holiday spice. I love it. <laughs> so I found that I was like, God, oh, this is so delicious, even with no sugar and it's non-dairy. I could still taste the pumpkin. You know, it still reminds me of the Starbucks pumpkin spice latte that they have right now. But it's my own kind. It's just it's cold when <laughs> sipping through it. So, anyways, mm-hmm. I um this week I I have nothing but feeling grateful you know, like abundance, right? Like what you were saying earlier. Um, I think I've, we were looking, really looking forward to our three-day summit and we've prepared well for it. Um, I couldn't thank everybody that participated enough and um, for their support. And even, even those who I, I didn't even think would come through or, you know, would even come was there. And I really want to give a big shout out to our guest who was all the way from Japan because I thought that was one of the biggest thing um, that was unexpected for me. Um, thank you for your support um, and just being engaged, even engaged with us, right? And mm-hmm. another wonderful thing about virtual is that, again, anybody from anywhere can join. And I have, not only were we hosting this summit, we were also a student. I think I've learned, not only were we giving tips, but I was also learning at the same time. And I think you and I have learned a lot um, during this three-day summit. It was, I, I was overwhelmed with gratitude. I never would have thought that we even would have made this happen. I just remember we were talking about it. Let's try this. And we made it happen. Um, more than, you know, what I, what I expected. So I'm, that I'm very, very grateful for. And I am looking forward to more. Um, so we have a lot more things coming up that we've been working on. I'm excited about that. And um, what did you call again the new year? step up so for me every year i have a way of looking at the year i you know it's one of those things where i don't say okay this year i'm gonna do this this year i'm gonna do that and i'm, I'm starting to get more and more away from the all those mindsets of, oh this is the year so i do this i want to do that you could do anything you want so i kind of get my life set up mentally for different things and, and since i quit my you know, full-time job almost four years ago it would be like two months i mean literally four years ago so like the first year of 2017, when I really took that risk and quit, I put trying to survive, right? That's kind of where I was mentally, just trying to get clients, trying to survive. Second year was thriving. So after you get experience, after one year, now you have more experience. Now you know how to navigate things better. Um, know when to set your boundaries and all, all that great stuff. And then came 2019, personal growth. That's where I found iPad, coaching school. I started reading books. I started getting into a different minds and a different mode. And 2020 was my breakout year. And the reason I call it my breakout year, now I didn't expect the COVID to happen, but I wanted to get to the point where all those fears, doubts, and things I thought I couldn't do or not good at, I was challenging myself. Challenging myself doing a podcast. Challenging myself as can I write a blog post? Challenging myself can I send an email? How many live videos can I do? Challenging myself is stepping out of mold, right? And to becoming what I want to be. Right. I said, again, stepping out of mode to becoming what I want to be. Now, 2020 is my step up year. So to me, my step up is in you mean order 2021? To, yeah, 2021. Oh, my goodness. I'm still stuck in 2020. Let's get out of here. 2021, I call my step up year. And I'm not going to wait 2021 to start that. I made a commitment this morning before I did my cardio at like 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. Step up starts now. That means those emails I get, I'm going to to respond. That person that I want to reach out to, I'm going to make that phone call. Uh, how many videos I'm going to shoot, uh, uh, live videos on Facebook I'm going to shoot uh, weekly. I'm going to step that up and do more of those. These are things that I'm lacking at that you constantly, you know, subconsciously you want to get, I want to get better at this. So I wish I was better at that. But now I'm going to make a commitment to getting better at those few things, right? I can't get better at a hundred different things, but if I select three or four things that I know I can accomplish and check in with myself, like, we well, got the email, did you respond to? Oh, no, I've reached out to the person. No, you haven't. So like I said, after the, our podcast, I'm going to reach out to my mom because I got to make commitment to stepping up to how, showing how I feel. 
And that's why I call this my step up year is I'm going to start doing the things that are really going to set me up for my future. You know, failure or success is equal to the same. It's not all of a sudden you got success or all of a sudden you got failure. It really boils down to um, small nuggets, I call it. I got nuggets from my a boss I had at Fry's. It's a small nuggets along the way. So small nuggets can lead to big nuggets, which is failure, or small nuggets can lead to success. It equally are the same, but there's small steps along the way to lead to a success. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to launch our own lifesashuffle.com website. So for you guys out there international, your customers in Japan, Go right to our website. You can find us and download. So if you don't have, let's say, uh, Apple Podcasts, or you don't have Spotify, or you don't have all that stuff, why should you not be uh, neglected not to have information, right? So website, you have it. You can listen to it right then and there. And it's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, so stepping up, uh, let, let's do it. Um, you know, what I started doing, too, <clears throat> is relinquishing ties. And what I mean by relinquishing ties is, you know, we're caught up with certain things that really have no meaning to us. I, I, for a period of time, I was caught up with the kind of name brand clothes I had. You know, I, I have a drawer full of cologne. I have like 30 colognes, okay? How many colognes can I wear? One. But I have 30 different colognes because I want to be that guy that was showing all I know about colognes. Wine. I got freaking like 50, 60 bottles of wine, okay? How many wines can I drink? I, how many wines have I drunk? None. I never probably finished a bottle. So I'm really going to all these attachments to things that don't get me forward. So if you're out there right now and you want to accomplish something, okay, what things in your life are even people that you're attached to that are not helping you? Because you only are one person. You only got one mind. You only got 24 hours a day. So how much time do you spend on things that are helping you? How many times do you spend scrolling TikTok or scrolling Instagram or Facebook and not really looking? I mean, if you're scrolling Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn and you're getting the information you need, great. Most of the time you're not. This is to be out. We're scrolling pictures. We're liking this, looking at that, making some. We go all that excess BS, so that way you can really get that freed up mind and get that freed up energy to accomplish what the hell you want to do. That's all I got to say on that. <laughs> Damn, you got a lot to say. Um, I was listening to you, and you said nuggets. I'm thinking, oh my god, chicken nuggets, Chick Fil A chicken nuggets. Sounds really good right those. now. It's making me hungry. So you talked about commitment. You talk about like being on the right path. I was thinking on Monday, my kids brought up the start of Bethlehem to me. And I, I didn't, I, I'm going to go a little religious here. I, I didn't, I, I just, I learned something. Well, it wasn't new, but you know, it's been so long. And I was looking at them. I, these kids are teaching me something, right? And you know, so Zach was, I think before they went to bed, Monday was, was that the 21st? Yes, it was. And he said, you know, I wonder if the star of Bethlehem will show up tonight. And I was like, what are you talking about? So those two had a conversation and they it gave me a lesson on star of Bethlehem. And I remember learning this years ago when I was younger. And I'm so glad that they know and you know, they have they kind of know the science behind all that and the story behind it and for them to actually like even think about that and look outside to see if it will show up and it, you know I like to I'm the type of person that like to look up in the sky I like to look at stars I like to look at the moon it's most especially if the moon is full I like full moon I like to see it and if it's <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> yeah watch out <laughs> when it's full moon i feel like you know i feel like being one of those badass women like i gotta be out there and just whatever anyways i just <laughs> i just like it so you know this the story behind the star of bethlehem is it's um you know in in it it goes with the um the nativity, because uh, we have this nativity set also, and what it is is the star. That's the star that the three wise men um, in the story um, that inspired the three wise men to um, travel to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So that was the path that they follow that star to get to Jerusalem and find Jesus when he was born. I think they wanted to, yeah. And so they just followed the star. And so now the science on that is right now is that when Jupiter and Saturn meets, 
it becomes like a star, right? Mm-hmm. And I was, and then I was thinking to myself, I was like, okay, that's a, a star. You follow the path, right? What inspired you? I thought about myself. I have a star. I'm following my star. What am I inspired of? You know, doing what I'm doing right now. And you talk about being on the right path. And I believe that I'm on the right path to, I'm following a certain path. What I'm following is my heart. Mm. What does it look like for you? What do you mean? You say follow your heart. What does it yeah, look I'm like for you? Yeah, I'm following my heart. So I'm inspired by... Uh, ah, that's a good question. I Whatever I'm doing, whatever comes up, just comes up naturally. It wasn't like, it's not like I'm forcing myself to, I need to do this because I have to. But it's just coming out naturally for me. Like I want to do it. And when I do it, I enjoy doing it. Like the podcast. I'm motivated by it. It's not like, okay, because we have to do this and we set up a day and a time to do it today. I'm going to have to wake up or get up and set up and do this. No, it was, it just comes naturally for me. And even, you know, doing the summit, the seminars and just talking to people and, and working on anything life coaching wise. And I'm looking more to better myself into this i'm doing a lot more research right so what else can i do to improve myself because this is where i want to be and i want to improve myself more and find myself more and i want to dig in deeper into my soul like all those was coming up to me a lot lately and i you know i've done researches and so it's something that i feel deep down and something tells me deep down there that this is where i'm at this is what i want to do And I have a certain vision and I think I want to fulfill that vision and follow it. So it's like there's a path that I'm following. So I'm thinking, man, the start of Jerusalem, it's like, you know, it it was very inspiring. And I kind of relate it to my own story and my, my life and myself. So what you're trying to say, just so I can kind of recant or clarify, is that... Mm -hmm. Your heart becomes overjoyed when you're doing what you love doing Mm -hmm. and find your dharma, find your purpose, Mm -hmm. and you have faith in what you want to become. So as you look forward to finding what you want, you're doing the research, you're putting in the work, you're getting the knowledge, you're getting the the feedback, whatever it takes to get what you want Mm long-term. Is that what you're saying? It is, exactly. And, you know, I... Like you, I could be preparing myself for the next year or so or for the rest of my life. But whatever it is that's happening, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying the ride. And it makes me want to just keep going and do more. Yeah. That that's that that's the key. When you're living in the moment now, like you, you kind of figure out what you want. And I figure you know what you want. Your heart skips a beat when you think about it. You wake up, look forward to it. Like today, you woke up early, look forward to the podcast. You you wake up to do these things. Now things are more aligning into your life. Now you're doing a research on meditation we talked about before. Mm-hmm. You're doing a research on a retreat. You're doing all this stuff. Like I'm doing the same thing. Like I picked up. Uh, and Dick told me about that book by Inkhart Tolle, uh, um, Awakening New Earth, Earth Awakening. I've got the title. Does it matter? It's a great book. Okay. He obviously does author of power of now. Now I want to have a spiritual conscious awakening. So I got what the Ray on Monday, 29th, Monday or Tuesday, doesn't matter. I'm going to have a consultation with her because she's a spiritual awakening coach. Mm-hmm. I, I feel this is where I want to be. I want it. Yeah. So I'm doing research. I, I, I'm reading the books, right? I mean, it's there. So everything's that and I need to get ready. You know, because the, the funny thing about life, you know, we expect God or faith, whatever you want to do to give us a life full of a present, right? You expect us, you expect God to give us a present, things to be wrapped a certain way, all that great stuff. But in reality, if what you know now, 
Let's say 10 years, 15 years ago, Gloria, would you be ready to accept it? No, you weren't. Nope. Nope. So God has given us these little nuggets along the way to get us ready for what we want later down the road. Because now we're ready for something different. Now is a time when we want something different and we're ready to accept something different. We're putting it in the work. Uh, you know, no matter if the parachute doesn't open right away, we're going to do it and be freaking committed to the process. Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned it. To, I mentioned this to you one time when you talked about um, learning more spiritual spirituality. And I said, you're opening your third eye. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget when I said this to Ray, when she said, yeah, when I said I my my third eye had opened and. I will never forget when she said, when it opens up, it's pretty dangerous. Dangerous in a good way because you can't stop. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I am really feeling that right now. Once I've opened my third eye, it's like I can't stop. I want to keep going. I want to find more and more and more. And I want to dig deeper. And I want to go ah. further with it, you know? So you're lining with what you want. You're lining. When you align it, things work out. You know, you ever they make it easy for us audience out there. You know, most of, of us hear the saying, another dollar, another day, another hour, another penny. And, you know, I, how you like your job? I'm just here to collect the paycheck. If you're saying all that to you, you're not doing something you like doing. No. And and you know what? We, oh, go ahead. Because when you like doing something you like doing, you're not saying that. I didn't wake up this morning and say, oh, man, podcast at 9 a.m. Oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to do it. No, I'm committed. Let's get it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when I, when I've, you know, I've given a lot of this some thoughts lately because I had to stop for a minute. I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, what's happening? I can't stop. But mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that these are the things that, you know, it's all lined up for me. Like I want to do this. There's a minute, a moment where I, I thought, is this weird? Are people going to look at me weird? Are my friends going to think I'm weird? Then I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. This is me now. So whether or not I uh, people around me support me or not, I'm still going to do it because it's about me. I'm not trying to be selfish, but that sounds kind of selfish when I said it's about me. But it's not about them. It's about me. So why, oh, why should I? Go ahead. I was going to say, wait a minute. If you're doing what you like and someone doesn't accept it, great. They don't have to accept what you don't. But they, they don't have to accept what they don't know you feel. Right. Yeah. They don't have to accept it. No, they don't. And, and you know what? Yes, you're right. They don't. But I had that moment. I had a moment because I know that to some, this is all new for them because they know me as, you know, somebody else, right? A, a different person. And if going through all these changes, what now I maybe you know, now that I found my dharma and, and I'm living it now might be weird for other people. And that's what I was saying. But I had that moment just, just for a minute. Then I was able to snap out of it because I realized, man. I'm either going to inspire somebody or I won't. They e they will either believe in me or they won't. But that's not going to stop me. So either you come along the ride with me and follow me or you don't. That's fine with me. Because you're committed. And you know what? When you believe in what yourself and what you're doing, then if someone doesn't believe, that's cool. Because they don't they they believe. Right. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, mm -hmm. let's go to one of our guests. I think her her name is Angelie. She was on our virtual seminar and she's our avid podcast. So how do you say her last name? Angelie Komaya? Com com Komia? Komia or Komia? K-O-M-I-Y-A. So Japanese, Angelie Komia. Yeah. Komia or one Komia? One of our Komia, okay. Hopefully it's right. It's Apologize, <laughs> Angelie, if it's wrong. <laughs> She said she really likes listening to our podcast. And one thing I never looked at, she's, her comment was this. It feels like I'm meditating. 
Yes. Oh my she, God. Yeah. And, and what that really meant for her was that, okay, I'm cooking, but I'm listening to podcasts in my headphones or, uh, you know, I may be at the gym or I'm taking a walk. I'm, our voices are very meditating for us. So Angelique, thank you for the encouragement. I hope it's working. If it is, keep it going. And she's all the way from Japan. So a lot of people are meditating too. So one thing for us out there, those at Facebook, I don't mean use Facebook has now, but you can find us under Life's A Shuffle Facebook group, join. Our podcast will be there. You can hit the button, comment on it, or when I post on Spotify or any of those other websites out there, comment and I'll shout out your name on this podcast or any podcast we do. Please, if you have any questions, put them there because I'm ready to answer them and have a shout out. And maybe one day we'll do a special guest or we we'll do a giveaway. Mm-hmm. Sky's the limit here. But yeah. thank you for listening to another Freestyle Thursday. This is Ron Johnson, your life coach, motivational speaker, and a mindful coach. Yes, and don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, Life's a Shuffle Podcast. Um, this is our time to have discussions on any of the episodes. So I will or we will be posting um, our episodes there as well for you to listen and any comments or any feedback from you guys will be great. Um, thank you for all your support. And again, thank you for um, listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.